Hello, everybody. Welcome to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I introduce my guest today, I want to give a shout out to my sponsor, Manscaped. You know, it is not too late to give the gift of Manscaped this holiday season. The man in your life can join the 9 million men worldwide that trust Manscaped and try their new cutting edge Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Get 20% off plus free shipping when you go to manscaped.com and use code Holly. Okay, so my guest today is one of Serbia's biggest porn stars of all time who stirred out lots of hometown controversy on her rise to the top. Welcome, ex-biz Europa Performer of the Year, Cherry Kiss. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for this. Thank oh my you gosh, for you're so dish. welcome. <laughs> it's funny because like I know you because I licensed content on you from David for my website. Yeah. Um, I think I paid him to shoot you for me, actually, because like there's so many stunning girls in Europe that I don't have access to, and now here you are. Yeah, right I've heard about you since so long, and I was like, I need to get this opportunity. Like, oh wow, and that's, I'm so happy. That's <laughs> amazing. I mean, I know we're here to talk about you, but if you want to talk about me for a little bit longer, that's totally fine. <laughs> I've been watching you <laughs> for a while. <laughs> Thank you. Not creepy at all. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Merry Christmas or I should yeah. say happy holidays to everybody. If you are watching on YouTube, you'll see there is a gorgeous Christmas tree right next to me. Um, Christmas is my favorite holiday and, um, Masha came in and, and made this beautiful tree for me. Some of you guys know her as Kate and, um, she's the one who puts the hammer down on the YouTube live premieres for people who are being rude. <laughs> But look at this beautiful tree. So let's all thank her for for this lovely Christmas spirit that I feel infused into this entire Yay. episode. So, Cherry, um, you know, let's let's start at the beginning because you have yeah. quite a storied uh, career path. So tell me about how you got into porn. Well, so just when I turned eighteen, of course. <laughs> were you like waiting to turn 18 uh well actually no i didn't plan uh to to enter this industry at all when i entered this industry so mm -hmm. i started as a makeup artist and i uh, was i did makeup for a producer in belgrade mm -hmm. and he shot some documentary movies so my makeup was like go 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 fast yeah. and then you run away and then he proposed me, like, do you want to do, like, professional makeup? Uh, I'm in adult industry in Budapest. It's like a triple money for you. We go morning. We go back in the night because Belgrade, Budapest is, like, by car three hours. Mm -hmm. So it's not so far. I was like, of course. Of this age, you always need money. You always yeah. want extra work. So then when we went there a couple of times ago, back and forth, and then I was like always in my makeup room and you just hear like, ah, ah, and I was like, oh, I need to see, I need to go out of this makeup room. As soon as I went out to see what's going on, I was like, wow, I want to be part of this. <laughs> So you so, felt like you were missing out sitting in yeah, there, huh? Yeah, exactly. I didn't know. Like I was like shy, not really shy. I never been shy, but it's like I don't want to disturb, you know. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I saw this whole madness, craziness, everybody was laughing. So good energy. I was like, I want to try. I mm. want to try. So okay. that's how I started. <laughs> so tell us about like your very first scene. So a very first scene, it was the lesbian scene. Mm -hmm. And it, it was like, I don't know, I just felt like I belonged there. I, As I say, I was not shy. It was just like, yeah, it was fun. I didn't feel like uh, I don't know what I'm doing. So <laughs> I was just going straight to it. So, yeah. And I didn't know yet uh, productions, like uh, what is big production, small productions, what like how I supposed to build my career. I didn't know shit. Mm -hmm. I just was like, I want to try everything. Mm -hmm. So basically, since very beginning, I just did everything what I could do. So it's like, and uh, it was really, it, it was fun. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. And I didn't, ha I didn't plan like, oh, I will build my career or something. It's like none of this was in my mind then. It was like, just like, let's make money. Let's have fun. Let's travel. I was like, ah. So yeah, that's how I started. <laughs> so you said that you, when you started, you did like every scene. Are there any scenes that you regret doing now? No. 
So all of them Especially were okay for now, you. now, I don't regret anything. I appreciate like uh, everything I've done. I appreciate big time because I come from very small place, like, and I would not see five percent of what I saw through this business uh, and experience as well. If I did I if I was not part of this business so I'm really happy about all this time then when like in my country we will go through this later I guess but when in my country like everyone start to write about me and judging me then I start to regret in one period but then I was like no why I should regret that I didn't do anything bad like fuck you yeah. <laughs> fuck you all like yeah, seriously yeah. and then even later when I knew some something about those people who the most they was judging me like I was like oh my god like really you are judging me like <laughs> well it's usually the people yeah. that have like the most personal issue yeah. with or like the most attract you know it's like always the people who are the most anti-porn are the ones who like secretly yeah really or like too into it so they take their they're confused and they take that out on you yeah. like, like so common the, the the people who be, will be renting for like podcast like this mm -hmm. uh, uh louis vuitton bag which will cost thirty thousand, they will rent for a mission for one thousand i'm like dude why you need to present yourself this way like mm -hmm. it's 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 a bag okay dress i understand because you need every time when you go publicly some different dress but back, come on, and yeah. to show off. And these kind of people was judging me. I'm like, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Just that. <laughs> I will say, like, one of the things that I love about the adult industry, probably, like, the biggest thing, and I say this to people all the time, and a lot of people don't – doesn't resonate with a lot of people unless you're in the industry, is that there's a real authenticity to people in porn. Yeah. And, I, and it's the people that I love. Yeah. You know, and I've worked with celebrities and I've worked like in fashion and mainstream and there's something about like porn stars and working in porn. And I think it's kind of one of those things where like you're out there, right? Yeah. You've like nothing to hide. You've like fully exposed yourself. Yeah. You're not trying to pretend to like be something exactly. else. You know, there's just I don't know. There's just like I really enjoy it. I, I, I think so there is uh, less complexes, let's say, like yeah. this. Like everyone have good and bad side, of yeah. course. And it's the thing is, like, as you say, we are just so naked that we don't have what to hide or to... And I find as well our business like a little family. Yes. So since I've been in another businesses, I realized like... In this business, people are more honest than in another businesses. So it, this is from my experience. And it's like, I don't like to generalize, but I need to because it's just my feeling. And it makes me uh, fall in love with this industry much more. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's so easy going. Yeah. There, so there is like a real sense of community. And I yeah. think a lot of it has to do with the fact that, you know, we're the black sheep of the entertainment industry, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like the underdogs has been like shunned by everybody else. So... <laughs> You know, we all kind of get yeah. together and it's just it creates that like, I don't know. Yeah. That's really cool. That's true. So going back to your early days, one of your first scenes was with a 70 year old man, right? When you were 19. Yeah. So what was that like? So, uh, well, in Budapest, they, uh, not nowadays that much, but this time when I started, it was very popular, like uh, old and young. Yeah. So, like, example, Mario Salieri, he's still shooting this kind of movies. And it's, it's totally normal because performers, they look different. So mm -hmm. for me, if I shoot with this Christmas tree or with water, <laughs> leave my I Christmas can... tree out of this. <laughs> I see, I see you. <laughs> I, can, I can make you believe. Look, I will look now this sexy or I will look with a love. Or I will look like I don't give a shit about. It's like I can I can shoot with anything or anyone or like this is what performer it is. Like I don't. By even... the way, that was a great plug. For liquid death. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to put that out there. <laughs> so it's like whatever. I I didn't mind and. Later on, when I understood I want to build a career from uh, this, so I uh, choose what I want to do. Mm -hmm. 
And it's not because what was bothering me, what I did before. It's just, of course, I want to show myself in bigger companies. So to make my name bigger and it was not anymore like old and young. It was not popular. So that's why I stopped. Mm -hmm. But if it was something like now popular, I will do that. So they are performers like everybody else. So it's like... Why not? And for example, the Mario Salieri is big in Europe. And is he a director or a performer? Director. Okay. So, and he shoot like a big movies and uh, like he's Italian, like he's very slow. <laughs> but he's great. When you see his movies, you're like, wow. So, and yeah, it was, it was amazing thing to do. My first scenes is lesbian scenes. And then after was all young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's you had no you showed up to set, knew what you were doing, met the guy and you'd like no problems. Exactly. I'm even today like this. I never changed about it. Yeah. <laughs> we go like boo, go. Because <laughs> you I mean, you know some of you will see that and they, you know, of course, like, oh my God, the age gap and the poor girl and she must be so disgusting. Can I yeah. can I make an admission though? I kind of think those scenes are sorta of hot. <laughs> Yay! Sorry. <laughs> boom, boom. Yay. I actually always liked older men. And now that I'm older, you older men younger. are like really old. <laughs> yeah, uh, me too. Like I, I like older men. It was like kind of hot for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then now I'm looking for younger. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm like, okay. But it's like, it's funny because, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's always that reverse, right? The, the age gap. So it's yeah. like the, the young girl and then the older guy. And then, like, if once you're an older woman, then you're a MILF, and then you're only cast with, like, younger guys. But I'm, like, I am never attracted to young guys. Never. They don't know oh, shit, of no, course. No, <laughs> like, what you will do men. with them? <laughs> yeah. It, either men my I mean, look, I'm not attracted to anybody else besides my husband. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> but if I was, it would be someone my age or older, but not not younger. Just, He's going I don't to know. just say that <laughs> for the for the husband. He doesn't watch the show, but uh, just, just just in case. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you were cast in a reality show after the news broke that you were doing porn. Um. What was that show like? So I need to start from uh, j- my country judging me. Uh, okay. They, I will never forget one situation. So now you will understand. This is just one thing I survived. So when all this thing, but I did it was like, I, I could not even think that will that much explode everywhere. It was all over the news. My friends was calling me, are you okay? And it was like, wow, presented like I'm raped or something. It was like the, it, it's, it's, they, they was just writing crap. So, okay. Help me understand this though. So you're from Serbia. Yeah. Um, but you can't be possibly the first person girl from serbia who did porn like why did was the reaction over you so big well uh there was girls long time ago who will do one scene and disappear or something amateur me i was doing it professionally so that's why they put me as a first girl ever who because i am Mm -hmm. actually so uh there is a one girl she's my friend alicia reese but she's uh canadian serbian oh yeah i've shot her yeah yeah Yeah, she told me about you yeah Yeah, Yeah. i love her she's so cool and in budapest we spent a lot of time together the Mm -hmm. last summer and uh, yeah so she's uh, living in canada and i'm serbian serbian who is doing this professionally and there is none there is no other girls. Uh, Why do you I, think that is? Uh, because people... Okay, so f- to, to start from some, people are very judgmental because they don't know. I think like every everyone who is judging something is people who who don't have enough education and they just don't know because before I was angry what they did to me. Now I'm even sorry for those people mm-hmm. who are judging because they was not traveling. They don't have experience and they simply, they don't know. That's why they... They talk like this, you know, if they knew, unless they are really bad people, <laughs> mm-hmm. if they knew probably most of them, they will change their opinion about our business, us, how we are like normally and yeah. everything, you know. So one situation I will never forget. I had a long hair like this. After all this exploded, I got back to my country to fix situation and I was... I, I could not understand it. It was, it was terrible. So I went to buy bread in bakery and the woman recognized me and she said, you're a whore. Get the fuck out. I'm not going to sell your bread. 
I was like, wow. So I cut my hair until here. I had a fake sun, uh, like uh, glasses, no, not sunglasses, glasses, and a hat. So I could operate through my home city. I needed to to look different than I am. You had to disguise yourself exactly. so you could go buy bread at the bakery because exactly. you did porn. Exactly, exactly. And this was for like nearly six years. And then this made me angry because I want to like kill myself. I understood my family shock for them, but for another people, like really. So then one, I'm lucky that they had some people behind who like who helped me, who was there for me. So one, uh, my friend, his wife, uh, she was in a Playboy and they are older than me. So she had same issues a long time ago. This guy helped me a lot and gave me advice. He said, no, you don't go to depression. You face it. If you leave people to step on you, they will feel soft. People will go more. Mm-hmm. As you say, the most of them are insecure people who do that. When they feel hard, they will step up. They will respect you. And they stayed in my hair. 18 years old, you're a child. You don't know shit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah. He said, like, you have so many. I had so many invitations for TV. Go to reality show because it's one way to that they see how you are. Like, mm. go. So I remember, like, oh, my God. And the reality show, I was like this, but pretending. I'm like, I don't care, you know. But yeah. inside. <laughs> what was it called? Uh, it's a part of a couples. Okay. But it's in my case, it was not a couple thing because I, I was not uh, fighting like for uh, for a main, uh, how you say, uh, uh, the money. Mm-hmm. So I was not there for three months. I was there. I supposed to be there one week, but they asked me to stay a little bit longer. So all together around 10 days. And what happened? Like I had the reality show live. Everyone is watching. And everyone started to judge me immediately. Like and there is like a big uh, singers. Uh, this time it was like really famous people in the reality show. And I was like, but you did this. And I, I read everything about all of them. But you did this, you did this, you did this, you did this. And why are you judging me? You did everything. Like, <laughs> like what the fuck? And I was like, Oh, because camera was everywhere. They start to be very nice with me. I was like, okay. Then after when we had the games or something, I was smart, let's say like this. Mm-hmm. Um, like they saw that I'm a person who, who is not fighting. I was the only, only one who is not fighting and fucking around. Mm-hmm. So I changed all this step by step. But six years took me to to fix with my family and everyone and my family still today they don't understand this business but mm-hmm. they just want me to be happy so I have an amazing relationship with them and I love my family they're really nice people and now it's fine now it's fine yeah but six years <laughs> yeah six years <laughs> wow I mean it's interesting what you said earlier about you know people who are you know, tend to not have a lot of experience judging you and and looking at you that way. Because I find that, you know, people look at everything through the lens of their own experience, right? And it's like, so if it's very narrow and you only know one way to live and you've only met one kind of person and you've only like been in one kind of place, um, I can see how it's difficult to understand like other people. And what I've come to realize is that it's not even necessarily – for me, like there's things that people are into that I, I don't understand, but I've come to a place in my life where I don't judge them for it yeah. because I'm not you. Like, of yeah. course, I don't understand why you like this or, you know, I don't understand people who like celery. OK, <laughs> celery is fucking disgusting. OK, all you people who eat celery are weird, but I'm not going to judge you for it because it's delicious to you. But <laughs> You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Fuck celery. (laughs) Um, But you know what I mean? And so it's it's kind of about understanding that people are different and that we all like we are an accumulation of not only like our life experience, but like, you know, biological traits and that kind of thing. And so I think that as you go through the world and the more you travel and the more different kinds of people that you meet, I feel like personally this podcast has really opened my eyes to 
different ways of living, different ways of thinking. And I think it's made me a better person and more yeah. compassionate because I literally sit what down did... with people for an hour yeah. and they tell me like their stories and their perspectives. And like, it has changed me as a person. What I like about uh, this podcast, it is uh, education. Mm. So this is what I want to start with my YouTube channel and uh, or wherever like I am, I try to educate people. Mm -hmm. So this direction I want to take, like sex is a very big thing. Like mm -hmm. people need to be educated about our business. People need to be educated. They need to understand. They need to know. They need to see example of it. Mm -hmm. They need to see be more of backstage. Like um, since I produce, I, I've been recording backstage all the time and uh, placing it on a website, uh, making deals with company to use this backstage because for all those fans just to see around like what we do and it is fun, but it's so professional. It's it's a job. You know what you do when everything there is the rules and people just need to know this too. We need to educate them. Like I wish there is more podcasts like yours. So they, they're supposed to know. Yeah. You know, they will maybe and not maybe, but we can through some time we can change. Like I did it in Serbia, like I've been all the time speaking about my job and everything. And you know what? I'm so proud. A lot of things changed. So now it's not like before. Mm -hmm. And I know that I'm one of the one big reason for this as well. But I didn't want to give up. I was like, people need to know. Yeah. Well, and I think, too, you know, so many people look, I mean, we're all biologically kind of created to procreate, right? So yeah. like everybody, most people have a predisposition towards sex and yeah. interest in sexuality, but there's so much shame around it too. And so I think that the more that we can educate people about what working in the porn industry is actually like and the steps that we take to make it a safer, better place. And it's not perfect, like bad things happen, but like yeah. we address those issues and we try to solve them. Then I think also too, that helps take the shame out of the viewers watching porn. Cause I've had a lot of people tell me, that they like this podcast has helped them enjoy porn now yeah. because before they thought like, Oh, all of these girls must be victims. They must hate what they're doing. It must ruin their life. You know what yeah. I mean? Cause that's when they've yeah. been told. So they watch porn because like they're, you know, they, they want to have that entertainment, but then they feel bad about it. So being able to, you know, talk to these people in person and hear their stories and be like, Oh, these are actually like yeah. thriving members of society. And they've like bought investment homes with this yeah. money and they provided for their family and they're like, yeah. you know, happy, regular people. I, I feel like pe it's helped people just in enjoy porn. And that's what we're here to do, man. We're yeah. here to help you <laughs> enjoy porn. Don't feel guilty when you jack off people. It's, it's all it's healthy. Here for. We're here for that. We're here <laughs> it's, for you. It's our job. Masturbators, we are here for you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing this for you guys. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, speaking of doing things for us, for me, for, I don't know, I, we're going to take a commercial break. I was trying to think of some clever segue into that. And <laughs> I just couldn't. So, you know what, we're going to take a commercial break and then, uh, we're going to be right back. Hey there, podcast listeners. Today's episode is brought to you by Blue Chew because let's face it, we're all adults here, and we know that sometimes, well, things don't always go according to plan in the bedroom. But you know what? That's okay. It happens to the best of us, and this is where Blue Chew comes in. Now, look, I'm all about supporting our partners and helping them feel their best, and that's why I want to talk to you about Blue Chew. It's a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable form. So why am I talking to you about this? Because I believe in open conversations about relationships and the ups and downs that come with them. And Blue Chew makes it easy for men to address performance issues discreetly and conveniently. No awkward doctor visits, no waiting in line at the pharmacy, just a confidential online consultation, and Blue Chew is delivered right to your doorstep in a discreet package. I really want to support men in feeling confident and enjoying their intimate moments. Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you can trust that it's safe and effective. And it's a game changer for those times when a little extra boost can make all the difference. After all, a healthy relationship is built on communication, understanding, and sometimes a chewable solution. Visit BlueChew.com today and use promo code HOLLY to try Blue Chew for free. Just pay $5 in shipping. 
That's bluechew.com promo code Holly. Take the first step towards a more confident and satisfying experience in the bedroom because great moments happen when you're ready and Blue Chew can help you get ready. I, I like family people says a lot yeah. about you because like, yeah. for example, boyfriends, I see them, I scan how they are with their family yeah. means how they will treat me. So totally. Say, yeah. Yeah. No, I was like that with my husband. We're back by the way, from the, from the commercial break, but, um, I kind of have a sort of funny story to tell that has nothing to do with any of this, but I kind of want to tell it <laughs> just because, but it relates to the family thing. Um, yeah. So when I first met my husband, I remember being like, you know, it was really important to me that he was a family man. And then he wouldn't like introduce me to his family for like the longest time. And I was like, why? That's and then, respect. Well, and no. And then finally he was like, my mom's not going to like you. She doesn't like any of my girlfriends. And I go, you fucking watch. Your mother's going to love me. I am. Have you met my mother? She's a crazy old lady. I'm so good with crazy old ladies. His mother loves me. I fucking won. <laughs> Don't ever challenge me with the mother game because I will win them over every time. <laughs> So yeah. I have a funny story, um, Ernie, it's sort of for you. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, because you spent so much time with them. So uh, my my father died in January, who I'm I sorry. was very, very close to. Thank you. Um, and we just re-released um, my mom's memoir that, from 1977 that he wrote. And I was working on it with him um, when he passed away. And he actually, like, told me that if he dies, like, could I please see it through? which I did. So I fulfilled my promise, dad. But anyways, um, so, so that happened this weekend. We launched a Kickstarter campaign. So we met our funding goal in under in a day and a half. And, um, so my daughter will often say like kind of strange things about my, my father. So she calls him Opa cause he's South African. And, um, she'll say like weird stuff like, Opa's here sometimes. Like she'll say she's yeah. three, right? Whoa. Yeah, she can feel him then. I have yeah. goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so this is crazy. So um we so yesterday I was taking care of the Camarillo, um spring this Camarillo outlets <laughs> to go shopping. <laughs> and I stopped in um my little production house on our on our ranch and I was unloading some stuff out of the back of my car. And Ernie, you obviously know that spot well. Ernie uh, recorded my the audio book for my for my mom, and he spent many hours down there with my mom and my dad. And as I'm like unloading stuff, my daughter's sitting in the car, and I hear her yelling. So I come over and I'm like, "Hey, Violet, what's going on?" And she goes, "Oh, she goes, I was just talking to Opa." And I was like, "Oh, were you?" And she's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Well, where is he?" And she's like, "Oh, he's down there." And she points down to the meadow. So our production office we're on like a big ranch and it's kind of like on a little bit of a a cliff and then there's like a meadow underneath it um and she's like oh he was down there and I go oh okay and I'm sort of like not really you know like it it kind of touches me because I want to believe it but I'm also like she's a kid like what what is she saying Uh, this age until this age if they They can can feel feel it it. so but this is the crazy thing so um she goes and I go oh what did Opa say to you and she goes Oh, no, he didn't say anything. He was just peeing in the grass. <laughs> now, that sounds funny, and it is, but if you knew my dad, he was, like, famous for peeing outside. <laughs> That's, like, all he did. And, like, it's, like, a running joke in the family because, like, there would be a bathroom, but and he, he would go outside, outside and pee outside. Oh, it was, like, oh, his oh, thing. Yeah. Did he ever pee outside with you, Ernie? Oh, you gra- never saw him pee outside? My grandpa okay. was doing that. And my grandma and my mom, they was going crazy there like just, there is bathroom why are doing no, this no, no behind the house he go he just, outside he just and, wants to go yeah out, pee, i don't know it's just like, it's i like thing. to be outside i understand this <laughs> it's a little more work for us yeah but um yeah so when she said that because like she doesn't know that he pees outside yeah. like i don't think he's done it in front of, i don't I believe that she see him and but feel him yeah when she said that that like And also, too, so if you knew my dad, my dad is, like, a staunch atheist. He doesn't believe in ghosts. He thinks all that shit's bullshit, right? I've been like this until I saw things. Yeah. So, but the funny (laughs) thing is, is that, like, if my dad was to come back as as a ghost, like, with his sense of humor, he would 100% do that. Yeah. He would come back as a ghost just to, like, 
pee outside. <laughs> like that's what he would do. That would be like, you know, his joke. Like why is wet here? What the fuck is going on? And he's like, ah. It would just be so <laughs> like Yeah, so him, so his <laughs> sense of humor. So I don't know, that like really threw me. And I don't know, I feel kind of like You're supposed to believe in these kind of things because I I, I was like this. Like I, I'm from very religious family. Mm -hmm. So you can now understand also this porn thing. My grandma father and my uh, grandma uh, brother they was priests both of them oh wow yeah my grandma from father uh, from uh, father so it's like they was very religious always and i was like no there is and i always find some mistake somewhere or some no mistake like something what is like uh, because i read the quran i read the bible so some things make sense some things not and i know that there is hope and uh, religion is good family wise and my opinion was it's all for family mm -hmm. but there is like certain things and i was always like oh this i don't believe in that i don't believe in that and then it comes to the energy ghosties and whoa some things threw me off. 23 mm -hmm. was my number of my life in school, uh, university, everywhere. And always something happened on 23, like big, like bad or good. So I turned 23 and I start seeing things, like feeling things and all, like, oh my God. Then after I talked to my grandma and she actually was healing people with her bioenergy. So it's like, it's all big story. It doesn't matter. But then I, I was like, okay, there is something. So the point is just that we don't get lost in things we cannot understand, mm -hmm. but there is we are energy, everything is energy, things are going on around us, we cannot even imagine. So now my opinion is totally different, I believe. Yeah. And I believe that kids, especially because they are pure, they have pure energy and they have like this, what we call third tie, like yeah. they can feel and see much more we can imagine. Yeah. So yeah. Because they I, haven't had like, they haven't been beaten down by society and yeah. being like, this is not true. Because we build up these walls in our yeah. brain, right? Exactly. To like direct us along the path that like yeah. society wants us to take. And we're like, this isn't true. And so, exactly. so you go down this path. But it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's hard to break down those things. But yeah, I feel like, I feel like he's, he's around. I had a dream about him um, like a month ago that literally like, I don't know how to explain it, but I felt like he was there. Like I, it was, I, I woke heard, up crying. I, I was like, hear also sure. that you, if you if you see him or dream about him or that you still didn't let it go, mm -hmm. and once you let it go, he will be more peaceful and uh, rarely this kind of things is going to happen. I don't know it's true or but yeah, this is what I hear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like I've let him go. Like I grieved pretty hard and. I've made peace with it, but you know, yeah. you're like always sad, you know, when you lose someone close to you. It's, it's so, normal. Yeah. It's normal. I'm sorry about it, but this is, this is crazy thing about life. And, uh, that's why I'm like, for me, time is relative. And I say that means like, make your life longer. How every day do something different, interesting, or a little bit different than what you did yesterday. Because when you do every day, you do the same thing. Your life is like, whoop. Mm -hmm. If you every day experience different things, you have a lots of experiences to die with and life is just like, poof, it's yeah. gone. So we will all end up the same. So just like try to do something crazy every day or little crazy or something. <laughs> Where, how do you, so how do you institute that into your life? Like what are, maybe, what's an example of maybe like a little thing that you would do to yeah, do things like, differently? Well, uh, depends, of porn. course. Of, uh, yeah. Uh, Get into porn. That'll be different. Yeah. Every day it's a different day in porn. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's for sure. But uh, it's like even at home, like uh, I will choose to cook something one day what I never tried to cook mm -hmm. or I will just uh, read something new or I will just go to the new place or new shopping center. Now mm -hmm. it's your fault. Camarillo, Camarillo Spring you Outlets. <laughs> you know how much money I spent? <laughs> I or how much stop. money you didn't spend because oh, the bargains yeah. you will get that's true i don't know to stop when it's shopping i'm avoiding it because i i still i search my middle i'm black or white with this like mm -hmm. i don't go or if i go it's like oh my god like terrible really terrible anyway yeah i every day i try to do something new mm -hmm. or at least to learn something new 
Yeah. So just experience, like, or I will go to nature on uh, some place where I be not. So mm-hmm. I will just stay around. Then new person come, you talk with this person. Sometimes you change the numbers. Like I always say, like, for example, for these people who are sitting at home and they wish to their life to change or they are depressed. First of all, the depression is wasting a time. We all have it, but can last one day, two days or one year or 10 years, depending on you. So if you go to the shopping or <laughs> shopping is in my head, if you go to the shop like 20 times or if you go one, it's big difference. Why? Because 20 times, if you go 20 times, it's 20 times more uh, chances that something is going to happen to you, right? So you need to move your ass. You need to go, 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 do, do, go. And then your life is, voila, interesting. So you're saying like <laughs> rather than staying home and ordering everything on Amazon, Never. just like get out there. Uh, I, I say really, that too, but man, do I? Use I it love all? it. Do I use it all love the fucking time? <laughs> I'm so addicted in Europe, like uh, especially Budapest. Your packet don't arrive, or they don't call you, or it's not possible even to order anything. It's yeah. totally different system, because uh, especially Hungarian system is like why simple when it can be complicated. <laughs> it's like it's almost <laughs> like this. <laughs> and here, oh my god, I was like I, I jerk off on Amazon. Like, like imagine me from Hungary, I, I come here and I'm like, this is so easy. I even have the room for it like yeah. what i know oh it's, my god I, I know yeah i'm every day on amazon now yeah it's yeah. pretty bad it's pretty bad but you can still do you can still do the amazon and go somewhere yes <laughs> i'm you doing go to, on the, on the, to the <laughs> store and do amazon so so you mentioned about doing something different so we're almost at the end of the year right it's yeah. it's almost 2024 Fuck. what is like the <laughs> biggest thing that you think you did differently this year differently yeah I'm moving here <laughs> What a great segue into, so when did you come to L.A.? <laughs> well, I arrived here in January and uh, took me a long time to just like get used to live here because I'm very attached to my family and friends. It's mm-hmm. terrible. Like, And I'm alone here. But then after now, my friends are coming to visit me. Everything is different. I meet new people. I'm training boxing. So I do skydiving and I'm happy. <laughs> That's I mean yeah I'm that's happy. crazy. I did boxing for years. I loved it. Yeah. Skydiving no fucking way, man. Why? Skydiving and celery are just a big deal. <laughs> <for me. laughs> okay, celery when I can understand. <laughs> Exactly. Skydiving is uh, more safe than driving car. You I, have I the I the parachute. Which one is like you? You can faint. Don't give a shit. <laughs> don't give a shit. No. I convince you. Okay. No <laughs> desire to go skydiving. I uh, look. I'm honestly. I'm an adventurous person. Like I'll do a lot of things. Yeah. Skydiving is absolutely not. I'm adrenaline junkie. I need something like like crazy like this. I need really? to be like ah. <laughs> like I'll go shark cage diving with great whites. Like uh, totally down for that. Yeah. Um. But there's something about like, and I'm not even like terrified of heights. Like I don't have problems in planes. Um, I can go to the top of build. I mean, you know, I've shot girls where I've like fucking looked over like a pretty high, you know, like to get that photo. But (laughs) skydiving. I I love it. No, thank you. I really love it. (laughs) So what was the biggest like culture shock when you came to LA? Everything here is opposite in Europe. Hmm. Like everything. Like, I don't know how many examples, even like when you want to open door, it's in Europe is different side than mm-hmm. here. Like I love big park parking places. <sighs> in Europe is like you, you can, you need to squeeze somewhere and somewhere is like, I don't know how people drive in Europe. Like I'm literally when I'm in Europe and I'm in a oh car, I'm like this the whole time because the cars good. get while, so... While you drive. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not driving. No fucking way am I driving. I will not drive. But like when I'm in a taxi or someone else is driving, yeah. I'm like, I'm paused. I'm like, you're going to hit that guy. You're yeah, gonna hit it's, that it's guy. like very small yeah. distance. How, yeah. Crazy. And you, you don't have place to park. No. It's, it's just none. <laughs> no. I remember we were in Italy. Um, oh, my oh, no, God. The south okay. of, actually, I think it was the south of France, right on the, the border. And yeah, pe- like at night, people just parked in like the median and like yeah. the, in between the lanes. Exactly. Like, you don't I, have just, place. Just yeah. park there. It's like... I love about uh, America. I love this uh, 
big attitude or everything is mm-hmm. big. Like mm-hmm. I was shocked about food though. It's like, yeah. I'm like, this is for 10 people or yeah. what I'm getting? Like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but and like everywhere you have something positive and negative. That's mm-hmm. how I'm looking it for this. Like, I don't like here that, um, you cannot use your legs basically everywhere is car, car, car. Yeah. In- That's also LA specifically. Yeah, like I did a vi- York, you can- I never visit. I just visit uh, Vegas. So mm-hmm. uh, what I'm now talking about is just LA basically yeah, because yeah. I am still very new here. <laughs> let's say like this. So and I live in Northridge. What I hear, like for example, if I am in uh, Santa Monica or somewhere, I could use my legs eventually. Mm-hmm. But uh, in Northridge, like I don't go to pee without the car. So mm-hmm. it's like, well, yeah. you know that like um, Henry Ford helped design the layout of Los Angeles so that people would need cars. Yeah. So it was kind of like planned that way. Planned that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like I would love to to more walk, but yeah. what the good part here you have everything. So I have my three gyms actually in the building. So it's uh this part what I'm missing, I can uh, go to a gym and I can, you know, fill it up. Uh what I love here is beautiful nature. Like uh, in Europe we have beautiful nature he- as well, but uh, it's it's smaller kind of feeling because it's small countries. Mm-hmm. And here is like when I drive I'm like <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> Our national love- parks are in California are like insane. I love I-, I need to visit like I didn't visit so many things, but I yeah. need to I-, I was reading about <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I need to visit definitely. And everything is just opposite. Everything is different. The way you function, do things. It's it's just everything is so different in Europe. Um even even in our business when in Europe, like we rent location and we are like eh, and we shoot, we are relaxed. Here is on on the hour and ba ba go 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 go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fitting about this here because I'm like, go, 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 go. Always, mm-hmm. even on my own production, everyone is annoyed by me. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, go, you do this, uh, do you do this. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't like wasting a time. So yeah. this is... I the- bet the models appreciate that though. I'm the same yeah. way. Like yeah. I'm, I cannot relax on set. Like I don't sit down yeah. when I'm eating. I'm like, I'm like yeah. walking the around, <laughs> like eating like there's like no... Because, like, I also, like, I want to go home. Yeah. I know everybody else wants to go home. I, You said it's by the hour, yeah. so I don't want to spend more than I have to. Yeah. Um, Are but you, I, like, this normally, like, hyperactive? Yeah. Yeah, same. Yeah. So what is your astrology? Um, I'm a Virgo. Virgo, yeah. They are also working, working, working people. Yeah, <laughs> I'm <really> Capricorn. Okay. <laughs> same for me. Ta, 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 ta. Yeah. I don't stop. It's I'm hard. the same at home, too. I cannot sit. Like, for example, my friends is like, okay, let's watch movie. And I will wash dishes, clean apartment while watching a movie, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's tricky. I um, That work-life balance is hard and it's become especially challenging since I had a kid because now it's like I have to slow down and like spend time with her. You know what I mean? Like that's tricky. So how do you, how do you manage that work-life balance? Like are you trying to do that or are you just at the state where you're just like, I'm just – fuck it. Right now is the time to work. I'm just going to work and I'll rest later. Uh, I I don't think about resting at all, to be honest, because uh, I always even had a problem with sleeping. I don't sleep much, so mm. it's it's my problem since I was a child. Uh, that's why I need a hobby. It's not like I uh, just want to have. I need I need to to spend my energy. I'm really fitting in this business. So like I don't know how I will live without this business. Mm. I go shoot a scene. Then work on computer, then go boxing, then again work on computer. And I need to do so many other things so I can actually spend my energy. Uh, I don't think uh, my priority right now, it's not family. So I don't think about resting or something. Even when I, because I bring my own family on vacations. Mm -hmm. I just went two times with the friends Mm -hmm. and ex-boyfriend. But always I bring my family because I want to educate them. My younger sisters and my, my parents to see the world so I've been every year I bring them in different country Uh, and uh, so it's like even then like I'm on vacation already third day I'm like I need to do something Mm -hmm. I I cannot just I I, I go crazy yeah 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 (laughs) I need to work I don't know it's like I'm working since I'm 14 like my early 14s I start to work my ass off so I 
I don't know different way. Yeah. I just don't know. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I mean, there's something to be said for that. But there's also something to be said for, you know, people who ha- – sometimes, sometimes, I mean, I could not live this life, but sometimes I'm jealous of, like, people who have a nine-to-five and then they go home and they don't take work home with them. Yeah. You know? And, like, on the weekends they don't think about work. But I also, like – can't imagine living in that world. Like yeah. my husband has a, a like a nine to five. I mean, he works yeah. from home, but um, you know, he's and that's that's it. And he has a salary. And I'm like, and yours is the same. Like your income is predicated on how much work you do. Yeah. So yeah, that's why there's a lot of uncertainty well. there. But I also in, really enjoy that. Yeah. Because I love the idea of I could make more money this month than and I have that before. You have control. Yes. Because right? if it was always the same. I think like I wouldn't yeah. be as motivated. I don't know. I, I it's like now when I especially know you better. I, I don't think so. Both of us are like people who can be in the office mm-hmm. same amount of time. Yeah, and do the same thing. Like yeah. it's, we will go crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean that works great for some people. You yeah, know? and they and their priority is other things in life. And yeah, that's that's definitely not to be looked down upon at all like not at all this is the the thing what we was talking about people are different yeah and i i found like when you call yourself actually adult and when you can call yourself adult and say now i grow up is actually the moment when you truly understand that people are different yeah so it's like for me this was my moment of totally growing up to understand like a, everyone is different. So yeah. it's like you don't look subjective, you look objective. That's yeah. how you can have like, let's say, uh, right judgment about yeah. something. You need to go out of your shoes and then look the situation globally and scan it so you can see how or try to see how another people feel. So, yeah, I, I find in my opinion, this is like, you actually grow up truly deeply yeah. when you understand that. Yeah, that's like yeah. a sign of real emotional intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so back to porn. Uh, what is your favorite part about working in porn? Wow, there is so many. Like, people will always think who don't know our business that is sex and sex. I love sex. I'm a very sexual person. But my favorite things about this business is not about sex at all. Yeah. <laughs> It's about traveling, meeting new people every day. What we talk, doing something different. Mm-hmm. Like, I like one day I'm a teenager, another day I'm a milf. Uh, then I like that one day I have a heavy, bitchy makeup uh, and I'm Domina. Another day I barely have makeup, so I'm like, ah. mm-hmm. and I love acting a lot. Like. Acting is something what is like my big dream. I just, I love to imitate people. I love to just perform. Mm -hmm. And I always been this way. So all this energy on the shooting just makes me happy. When I, when I, one day if I don't go to shoot, I, I feel like it's, it's my day. It's weird. Mm -hmm. Something is weird here. So yeah, everything. Like I, I've been traveling everywhere with this business and yeah. We were just like all performers after the scene, before the scene, we have fun. So it's yeah. during the, the, the set, around the camera, like yeah. all these moments when it's not just, the, the, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you were once part of a gigantic orgy. Yeah. How many people were in that orgy? Uh, Bukake, it was uh, just the uh, the the. Oh, it was a bukkake. Yeah, it was bukkake. Yeah. Oh, my God. (laughs) Bukkakes are gnarly. Yeah. For those of you who don't know what they are, it's like when multiple guys, like, come on. It can be more than one girl. It can be, like, yeah, it's generally, like, one. (laughs) You were the only one? Yeah, 80-something people. 80 guys came on your face? Yeah. And 80 guys come, I swallow as well. (laughs) Okay. It was my dream to try. I was, like... I, I had like, I'm very pervert, by the way. So no. I had, <laughs> I can't imagine. You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, can you all guys have the mask of the animals on your face? And I'm like Ooh, lost in a jungle that's and they hot, are like actually. using me. You know? I like that. And it's like, I just twisted and it was like, I was so horny. And I, even now I'm masturbating on it, on it. So wait, okay. So it was 80 guys or like. 80, 80 come something. shots. 
80 something. 80 something guys. Because yeah. you know, a lot of times, like in gangbangs or bukkakis, like they to get home. 80 guys yeah. is so hard. So, like, some guys will come back and come more than once. Uh, happened uh, that as well. It was 80 something guys. I don't remember. Someone could not come and someone come twice. But yeah, it was definitely uh, more than 80 come shots. Okay, where was this? Uh, Madrid. Okay. Where did you shoot this? Like, where did they all? Where were in they? The studio. They're they're all the time shooting. The so same they had thing. like a massive studio for all these people. Massive studio. These people are shooting for them for years. So they are there like they know already. So they're like they're bukkake regulars. <laughs> yeah, eighty bukkake regulars. <laughs> Woo! That is so crazy. That yeah. is so. It's yeah. funny because. I know most people hear 80 guy bukkake and they think, oh my God, that's just like, they think about the actual like bukkake part. I think about the, as a producer, I think about the logistics. Yeah. Where did they park? Who did the paperwork? <laughs> Who shot their IDs? First thing is like, so funny you think about parking. That's parking. ridiculous. Like where, like who did the transport? <laughs> did they pay for their Uber? Because you can't park 80 people yeah. unless you, did they get a valet? Did they have like a big separate lot for them? Like yeah. where do you put all the guys? Did they yeah. feed them? Did they provide yeah. food? What was the catering cost? That's well, what I want to know. I had a beautiful hotel and, uh, uh, everything was I had a great time really but I don't know about them <laughs> yeah I, I just think about that like the poor P- who cleaned up afterwards I know. that's what oh but you, well but you I, I ate it, it all, all so it was not much to clean <laughs> oh, the PA must have loved you for that yeah and then I was like what is supposed to do now that's a lot of protein should I throw up they say to me like how you want I throw up and I was fine yeah, because I think Adriana Chechik talked about doing like swallowing many, many loads, and and I think it was her. She had said she had to throw up afterwards. Yeah, it's, it's a didn't, lot. Yeah, it's a lot. It didn't, yeah, it didn't feel so good. Uh, well, I did you have I a practice stomach to 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 throw up uh, easily, so I don't have any issue because well, I was you're drinking a, wo- a lot. That's you're a why. woman. <laughs> you're a woman. We can all we all know how to make ourselves throw up. <laughs> yeah, and when I was escaping, since I was escaping from the school, and I was like, how to escape the class? Uh, mm. uh. <laughs> so this was like from my parents' story. Yeah. Then after that, if I drink a little bit more, I will like very. It was very easy for me to feel sick when I drink, you know. Mm-hmm. So because when I was younger, I was not sticking to one drink. Like I will drink You're four, dr- him, yeah. everything different. I'm already sick. Yeah. So I've been just oh, let's go to trap and we continue. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so for me, throwing up is like. Uh, so, but you did have a stomach ache afterwards. Yeah, or... but I, I didn't have the already like uh, issues. I throw up before issues arrived. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, okay. So I you're like, easy. I'm probably gonna get a stomach yeah. ache from this. Yeah. I'm just gonna. God, what did that look like? <laughs> um, Sorry, I'm asking a bunch of really weird it's, questions. It's, I'm just so like... fascinated by this. <laughs> nothing special <laughs> just like, i guess it just looked like 80 guys came in a toilet <laughs> yeah kind of yeah kind of it's That's... a lot of saliva mixed with do you uh... like the taste of cum uh it depends yeah depends. it does depend that's a thing it's like sometimes be... i think so the guys when they use the steroids or something mm-hmm. is the most disgusting sperm yeah otherwise it's it's fun <laughs> how how were the guys at the bukkake were they mostly it it was nice they because it was fat healthy people <laughs> Did they put out pineapple juice in the catering? Because that's I what I would have so, done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to make your cum taste better. I yeah. don't honestly know if it's true. It's but true. It is. I, okay. I, I, this, if anyone's an expert on cum, it's this lady right here. <laughs> and she says the pineapple juice makes your cum taste better. I was so curious like you. I don't know if it's true. And to my ex-boyfriend, drink it. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> and then it's just true. It's sweet. It's wow. Sweet. That is crazy. So... This bukkake, was it your idea or were you um, the, I cast for it? proposed, yeah. So you, you came up with the idea. Yeah. How long did it take to shoot that? A uh, few hours. A few hours, but all included the interview, pictures, mm-hmm. everything. Like when we started, it was fast, yeah. the, the video part. Did you get to take breaks? If I want to, but I didn't. You didn't? You just <laughs> no. like, yeah. How long did the actual 80 guys coming take? 
Uh, as I remember, because it was a long time ago, that's why I'm trying to remember how long it t- took, because like all together it was around three hours with a few photos. It was fast, checking the test, blah, blah. And actually, all the video, it's less than an hour. Wow. Yeah. So these were like, that's good, because these yeah. were like the experience. Yeah, it was less than comes an hour. Because yeah. you don't want to be that that last guy in the bukkake who like can't come right and the girl's like <laughs> she's swallowed 79 loads she's like come yeah. on buddy like and he's just like trying to get there in vegas i've been doing the uh, glory hall and then i was like i recognize the dick of one guy and he could not come and he keep coming and i was like touching his dick i was like bro Get the fuck out of here. If you cannot come, you cannot come. I, I see you. I recognize your cock. It's you. I see that dick. Like, you are already four times here. You still cannot come. Don't fucking put your dick through this hole. Just get the fuck out of here. You just got lost. He's like, just trying to put what? his dick through different holes. Yeah. The next like, one, what? he puts like sunglasses with a mustache on it. <laughs> like he's actually just... so weird curvy. So it's very well recognizable. And <laughs> it was like, why you keep coming if you cannot come at least prepare yourself behind like oh my god viva la fluffers they was like in europe they, we had the fluffers like now i don't know where the old fluffers go <laughs> nobody has a budget for fluffers it can't be that like long time ago when i started big movies we had the fluffers i'm like those guys need one like yeah. it's like the fluffers oh are God. the fluffers are like Viagra and Blue Chew. And if you go to bluechew.com and use Kevin <laughs> Holly, you can get a, your first shipment for free. Just pay five dollars in shipping. Here's your fluffer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh my God. So I mean, it's hard for me to believe this considering like um these amazing onset stories that you've had. But you've said that you have a crazier sex life off screen than yeah. on it. So yeah. well, it's yeah. <laughs> Where to start? What I can say? What not? Sorry to all my ex-boyfriends. I will try to go enough around <laughs> so we don't know about who we speak because my friends will watch this. So if I whatever I say, they will know about who I speak. But they will know already anyway. So we are uh, with my friends. We are very open mm-hmm. to talk about this, but they always make a jokes of my ex-boyfriends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They like my stories. Uh, well, I love uh, to be short. I love fucking guys in uh, in this. Mm-hmm. It's my fetish. Oh, you like to fuck guys in the ass? Yeah. Oh, so you like to peg guys? Okay. Yeah. It's oh, sorry, American way peg guys. I need to. I need my vocabulary is still still it's very okay. simple. Fucking a guy in the ass is is equally acceptable. <laughs> it means the same thing. <laughs> I am I am on it. I work on my English here. It's like yeah. My English is still very broken. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I like to dominate guys. I like to try new things. So it's like I've done much crazier things in my private life, definitely. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, I had awesome ex-boyfriends. What we do tonight? Okay. <laughs> it was never a problem. Oh, I don't know. Even they will propose. Like, they trusted me. I trusted them. So mm-hmm. that's the big thing. And it's like, let's do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so easy. Uh, one night dressing up. One night all another things. <laughs> another night something new. My sister. Oh, my God. She had a trauma, I think. So, <laughs> okay. I need to say this story. So, yeah. Uh, my mom, like back days, she she liked to make a bread sometimes herself. Mm-hmm. So she had this wooden thing, and I stick this in the side of my ex boyfriend's ass, and I oh, <laughs> like a French baguette. So like a long, like a baguette, right? No baguette, like a the, long the piece of bread. Thing, what oh, oh, the, the rolling pin. Yeah, rolling pin. Oh, I thought you stuck a baguette up his ass. No, uh, the rolling pin. I think okay. that you just gave me it. Yeah, I'm I mean, count, can't work, but, uh, it'd be a little I, rough. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeasty. It's it's yeah. I never... It's so delicious. <laughs> I love baguettes. <laughs> I love baguettes too. I just love baguettes. <laughs> okay, rolling pin. So yeah, and because. It, Sometimes we we'll we were searching like what we should stick in your in the ass and we just find anything you know, and this time I was like fuck I will need to throw it because my mom will smell it definitely we need to throw it but doesn't matter we was corny so I did it and we was sure we are alone 
<laughs> then my middle sister, luckily she was not child then. Mm-hmm. So uh, she and I didn't see nothing. <laughs> oh, we told you to knock. <laughs> so sometimes she will enter and she will see my ex-boyfriend r- dressed like a woman. And it's the same, like, we told you to knock. <laughs> it's like, why you do this? <laughs> yeah. Since then she, she don't want to even talk about it. She's like, yeah. <laughs> my friends are disgusted by me though, like who are not in the business because uh, I will go that far for me. It's funny for them. It's not. Yeah. And they will arrive at my place. What you did with this glass? Yeah. <laughs> what you did with this? <laughs> Has this been up somebody's ass? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they are like, until I, no, I promise it's safe. I will not give you to drink from that. Maybe. <laughs> Dude, this, I'm sorry, but this kind of sounds like a drinking game. Like, you should have people over and then just have things around in your living room that you've stuck up people's asses. Yeah. And the game is, like, what what went up so-and-so's ass? And then, like, if they get it wrong, they have to take a shot. And oh then, like, if God. they get it right, That's then you so take cool. a shot. Two of my best friends, they will nail it. I'm even afraid they, they are, like, they, they, they know. <laughs> but see, but this is going to challenge you because now you're going to want to stick things up a guy's ass that people wouldn't guess that you would put up a guy's ass, like a I baguette. I will record that. Thank you. And you're I welcome. will send you this video. I would love to see it. <laughs> I will be like, they will, yeah, they will nail the game. I would love to Like, see even it. they don't know exactly, they will, they will guess. I, I mean, they know. <laughs> they will be like, uh-huh, this guy has this. <laughs> yeah. Um, and on the set, it's it's just like what producers say. It's not like you can go so far. Like I, yeah, yeah so it's yeah, That's yeah. Different. There's a there's definitely there's, there's definitely rules. Believe it or not, there's rules in porn about what you can stick up people's asses, especially if you're on OnlyFans. They like don't want you to put anything up any orifice that doesn't look like a penis. I just remember one story. I was near to choke myself. So once I tied up one of my exes and I tied up his hands and his balls and he's expecting some like story now. I start tickling him. <laughs> pulling out. What the fuck? I don't know why I did this. I just remember this story. Yeah. He must have been pissed. Oh, he, yeah, of course. I shaved his leg as well the same night when he fell asleep in the butt. (laughs) I love doing pranks, like, big time. Uh, Big time. Yeah, yeah. definitely don't ever pass out drunk around this woman. You don't know what you're going to wake up with in your butt the next morning. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, so um, you mentioned that you have the secret to fast orgasms for men and women. Yeah. Okay. I will need to explain. Yes, please. So uh, for men, mass- massaging the prostate, uh, actually I'm pra- practicing this for 12 years. So for me, it's taking very little time to make person come. <laughs> and it's like the trick is where your bush is finishing, where is the uh, actually beginning of your bush, there is your G point. Mm-hmm. For the guys, for the girls, is the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the guys, because like so many people think you need to, to come fast. Let's talk first about anal because this is something I love. <laughs> so <No. laughs> I'm obsessed with this. Are you? So, <laughs> with the really? best orgasm ever is like you cannot compare for guy, for girl. Whoever say no, they don't know. They didn't try. You need to try. <laughs> so it's like you always go this direction. You need to go in front and to poke no matter which position you are so need to go this direction and for guys and for girls and so you're saying like rather than like in it's more like an up and like it's you, here you so like if you're into the, yeah you need to just get this or can we have a wide on this <laughs> so it's lower it's lower for you, like it's here. here. Like, like yeah, where is your bush is starting exactly and if, even you press this you feel different if you just press like, feel like I got a pee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's the point. That's yeah. the spot. Okay. That's the spot. So it's like, it's so easy. Uh, if you want to come from anal, pussy, whatever, like you just go 
you see where the bush is starting, no matter which position, you just go straight to poke this spot. Mm -hmm. And for the guys, like uh, girls, whatever, you don't need the, 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 the big toys. People love big toys or because it's big. It's just like something what is turning you mm -hmm. on. But the G-point is so low, you can get it with fingers, you know, mm -hmm. like... It's, I made a guy like um, on the set come very fast. So it's gangbang. He's like, oh, I, I wait, I wait. I was like, boop. <laughs> he come. He said to my ex-boyfriend who was there shooting with us, you see what she did, you see? It's good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> see, it's good. I told you. <laughs> so it was, yeah, it's, it's, you can come so easy like that. And for girls touching a clit, in the same time, while you have anal sex or vaginal sex, you can come much faster. Like, and if you don't know how to come first, if if you actually so many women, uh, let's speak about women out, they don't have experience to. I'm so sorry for that, but it's just because you need to learn your body. How I did it, shower. I take shower head and I just masturbated. But I made, uh, you know, when when you are near to come and mm -hmm. your clit is sensitive and then you move. Yeah. So you need to start all over again. Yeah. And you need to make um, contraction with your muscles. So go in a squat position. Take the thing, just keep the shower, uh, because here you have the, the American showers is there. Like what mm -hmm. I talk about, how you say on English, the, the uh, cable. Yeah, it's just like a shower, like a detachable shower head. Yeah. And you take off the head, but you keep the, the, cab shower wand, the cable or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. the easiest way to learn your spot. Yeah. So you go in squat position, you put a shower around, you see. And when you make, like, guys, when they want to come, you see them all contract their mm -hmm. muscle. Is the fastest way to come. So mm -hmm. this way, uh, for the girls, like, they can come the easiest. Or if they have a toy... If they contract their, their muscles while they are having like experiencing their first orgasm, it's much more possible they will get to this moment. So contract okay. your muscles. <laughs> okay. All right. I yeah. love it. That's a, le that's a lesson to take home, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so do you, want, do you want to start like a family someday? Of course. Yeah. And, and I are grew you, up in a family. Yeah, you said you're very amazing. close to yours. Yeah. Are you concerned at all about starting a family and, like, how your career might affect that? Uh, no. I think so. If you find the right partner, it's actually the person who loves you no matter what. Mm -hmm. uh, to have kids, uh, no matter is our business or not, if things will happen in kids' life will happen anyway. So mm -hmm. they can have bad friends at school, no matter if I'm in porn or not. Uh, of course, I'm ready that can be some something I need to fix, like to explain kids well, what is mommy job or what was mommy job mm -hmm. or whatever. But I'm, I'm totally ready for it because they will be, they're my kids, they will be open-minded as I am, so... Mm -hmm should not be a problem. So I believe in that. And uh, I'm just not ready, but I'm very well experienced in, experienced in take care of kids. Like I took care of so many kids in my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my sisters in my family, they will even when it's some celebration, I'm very good with the kids. They will just leave the kid in my hand. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. And I have like a bunch of them on the bed, feeding them all together. Mm -hmm. I work in kindergarten. I love kids. Mm. Like, I love kids big time. So I'm good with them. I, I will not have issue and I cannot wait for this moment. So just that I'm more stable. That's why I want to produce more. So mm -hmm. I'm directing my own time and my, you know, when you manage your own time, no matter you work more, it's easier. So I can say, okay, these hours I'm with my kids. Mm -hmm. As a performer, I travel around and it's not me who, who manage it. So, yeah, when I stop performing, definitely I want to direct and mm -hmm. more and have a kids as soon as yeah. possible. One, two, three, four, as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> really, like as much. I don't know which age I will have kids, but as much as I can have, I will go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're they're a lot of fun. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned that you're doing a lot of producing. Um, so tell us a little bit about that. Like, are you directing as well? Yeah. 
And so tell us about um, who you're directing for, what you're shooting. Is it for your own production? So uh, I'm uh, directing for uh, Evil Angel, for Private. Uh, now I'm starting for Strapless. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of fun, though. I'm good with managing people. I have a great team. And one of my best friends is a very good editor. One of my best friends is a very good cameraman. So we are like team up. <laughs> yeah, those are like two yeah. key key yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. So we team up and we are nailing it. We are doing really good stuff. Yeah. I'm so proud when I see our pro. And this is my point because I will die. I don't care how much I work. They are the same just to make it perfect, like in our eyes, perfect. Mm -hmm. So after when we watch what we've done, we are we are proud. So that's the most important for me to, yeah. to do it and to never be embarrassed what I did to do something for money is not my thing. Yeah. It's, I want to see this after and say money is just an extra. Yeah. Oh, I'm proud. Yeah. It looks good. What do you like shooting the most? Like feature movies, Gonzo, like solo girl, 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 boy, girl. Like what? Do you have a preference? Uh, well, this is the thing. Like before I was more into uh, Gonzo, but now I like everything. Why? Because when you do just one thing, it's boring. Mm hmm so I like to change. Mm -hmm. And Stropolis is different. Like, I, I still uh, need to get experience in a future movie. Feature, mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, all the rest I have experienced already. Like, I we shot even samples for different companies. They like it. So my goal is to direct for a few more companies. So to, to, be, to go more this direction. Since now I have this good team here. And I just, I just like doing different things. So if, for example, these days I have this production is Gonzo, these days like uh, softcore and like all is different. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm really happy. And it's more, it's challenge for us. And yeah. what is funny, we are all the same age. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so How are, old are you? 30. Okay. Yeah. It's a good age. <laughs> It's a good age. We are all full of energy. We just yeah. want to work, work, work. Yeah, yeah. Thirties yeah. were thirties were definitely like my working years. Like yeah. I worked the hardest in my thirties for sure. And now I work I still work hard, but I work a little bit less. Where do you got a child? Where does she go? Yeah. No, where uh, well, uh, how old you, if I can ask. Oh yeah. It yeah. was when uh, you had your child. Uh so I had Violet. I was forty when 40. I got pregnant with her and forty one when I had her. That's smart. That's smart. It is smart, though I will say, um, you know, because I wish I had frozen my eggs. So I had, you know, Violet at Naturally. Yeah. Um, and I actually was kind of surprised. Not surprised. Like, we were trying, but I also knew I was older, so, yeah. like, I wasn't sure because I'd never been pregnant before. Yeah. Um, and then I got pregnant with her, and I had... And it was a great pregnancy, super easy, no problems, like no, you know, and they always say like, oh, when you're yeah. older, like these issues, I had no issues. And so I was like, oh, this is easy, no problem, like you can yeah. have kids later. And so we kept trying. And since then, I've had four miscarriages. So and that's why you're saying I wish to, to yeah, frozen my eggs. Because my last one, literally, like I'm ending my fourth one right now. Oh, fuck. I had it this week. Sorry. That's Okay. But it's I wasn't uh, expecting to get pregnant at 45. Like, I didn't think it would happen. But so it was now a shock. it's not like it's too late to froze your eggs or yeah. what? Yeah. Yeah. Because the thing is, is Until that. Until when you can do it? So, I mean, look, you can do it whenever yeah. you want, but just in terms of um, the, the health of your eggs. So when you're like in your 30s, there, there's, I can't remember the exact timeline because I was looking more towards 30, the end five, of the 30s. So, right. It's like, yeah, it's like till 35, like really good chance but between 35 and 40. It's like it goes to like 30 percent or something like yeah. that. After 40, it literally drops off a cliff to like 1 yeah. percent. And then at like 45, it's like 0 percent. Yeah. Because just because you're born with all the eggs that you're ever going to have in your body. Yeah. Um, when you're born. And so they just the cellular structure degrades over time. Yeah. So as time goes on, your your eggs get worse yeah. and worse yeah, so yeah, like yeah. i can get pregnant but like my the eggs aren't good so they can't keep the pregnancy now there's still a chance that like there's a good one in there yeah. people have certainly gotten pregnant at 45 46 47 and, and had a child and and that's happened it's just very unusual yeah um but you can carry a child 
up into your late 40s. Like yeah, I yeah. had a friend who got an egg implanted at like 48. Like that's not a problem. It's the quality of your eggs. So if you freeze your eggs now, and I would recommend that you do it. Um, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> then, yeah. Then you are good. <clears throat> Like, and I would, I would freeze yeah. as many as you can yeah. um, because, you know, like they don't, oh, each one doesn't always take, but then you can like, you can start having kids in like your late forties if you want. Yeah. You know? That's good advice. That's why I'm yeah. asking. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. I wish I, I wish I had done it because we wanted more than one and it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Because I, but you can, uh, did you ever think about to adopt the kid? Or you just um, the same way. On we it. thought about we. I don't know. We've talked about it. We've also talked about like getting a donor egg. Yeah. Because because what sucks about being a woman versus a man is a guy can have like yeah. kids and like I mean my fucking uncle. Yeah. His daughter, <laughs> his kids, the same age as my daughter, and he's like seventy five. Yeah. yeah. You know, like he had a kid at like seventy two. Wow. So guys, wow. The sperm's fine. Yeah. So um, we could use my husband's sperm and somebody else's uh-huh. egg, and I could carry it. Um, or we could adopt. Yeah. It's actually harder to adopt. Really? Like the paperwork is gnarly. Really? Yeah. And it's also like hard to find somebody. It depends on how you want to adopt. Do you want to adopt a kid who's already born? Do you want to adopt a kid who's in utero? Like there's a I lot of. I was always like uh, thinking about that because yeah. I'm like how many kids of this world need yeah. love? Totally. And I would love to have mine, but I would love definitely to adopt some. So it's like. It's 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 hard because it's like, yeah, it's like you would trade them the same, and yeah. they are better with you than there with nothing, right? Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, so many kids are not adopted. Always in my head I was like, I would love to have mine and to adopt as well. Yeah, but it also, I'm not gonna lie, I think that my profession might be an issue for adoption. Because they look really hard oh at you God, and your background. Is irritating me big time. It's crazy. Like, it's however. Like how we are discriminated for right. no fucking reason. But however, to get a donor egg yeah. is not that hard. Because it's not like a person yet. So like yeah. you're not going to go through the same screening process to get somebody else's egg. That's ridiculous, right? Isn't that crazy? That's ridiculous. Like it's supposed to be opposite, no? Yeah. So to make a child, um, you won't get screened that hard. But to adopt a child that... Already, already exists there. and needs a home is harder. Guys, make things easier for those kids. Those kids want to be adopted. What this all paperwork makes actually so many people for sure to give up. It's like it is. And it's also like on one hand, I also understand why they would be strict about it because you want to make sure that you're sending kids to a good home. However, to discriminate against yeah. somebody because of the yeah. work that yeah. they do. You exactly. and I both know that like that's we're bullshit. not criminals. We're not predators. We're good yeah. people that just have an unusual job. Like that's unfair. Yeah. So. I, I look our business as a, every other entertainment business. Yeah. So like positive things about this business, it is all what we talk about, experiences, meeting different people, doing different stuff, everything. But the all about it, the negative part, it is that you need to find yourself direction and to stick to that because when you don't have job which one is regular what is positive thing in regular jobs because you're safely going one direction in entertainment business and a singer actor who have money a lot coming everywhere we can do whatever we want get lost Mm -hmm. it's very common for entertainment business that the performers get lost or is it drugs or is it whatever you know or that they don't save money or something so we carry as well one part i will say you need to be very clever and strong if you want to succeed in this business right yeah yeah so it's not just it's so beautiful it is beautiful i love this business but you you come through like a lot of sacrifices of your time of spending time with your family you want you need to make more and in all this you you need to be very clever to don't slide Mm-hmm. To, because one slide, like, oh, one boyfriend or whatever, or wrong, whatever, is like, oh, two, three years of my, of my life. Then yeah. you go back and you rebuild all this again. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, yeah. We, we carry a lot as well. And all entertainment business it's, is the same, like, about these things, what I talk about. So our business is entertainment business is no much different than singer or actor or 
we we are the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's why I don't understand why people are looking at different. We we live totally same lifestyle. We have same lifestyle, like yeah, lots of freedom. But in this freedom, you need to be extra clever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no kidding. Yeah. Um. Okay. So before we wrap this up, uh, I do have a Patreon question from Michael Lee. Uh, so if you're a member of my Patreon, you can submit questions for my guests and I will ask them for you. Yeah. So Michael says, uh, hi, Holly and Cherry. I met Cherry in person at AVN in January. She was very nice. My first question is, how was it winning XBiz Euro Female Performer of the Year in 2021? And then I have, he has more questions, but we'll go one by one. How it was? Yeah, how was it? Oh, I I was not hoping at all because I've been nominated for so many years in multiple categories. And then I had an award from different things, but not performer of the year. So this time I was totally like, I was like, "Eh, I don't care. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was hurt a little bit. I'm like, "Eh." but uh, this year like happened. uh, I was surprised. I was so happy. And as I say, this gave me a big boost for America. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 big time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, his second question is, is Gia Lissa and Tiffany Tatum your favorite girls to work with in Europe? My favorite girls to work in Europe is Alexis Crystal, Amira Dara, uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I have I have many of them, but the two of my favorite is Amira Dara and Alexis Crystal, definitely. Okay. Um, have you worked with Gia? Is it Gia Lissa? Yeah. And Tiffany Tatum, have you worked with them a lot? Yeah. Okay, that's probably why he uh, asked that the, the With uh, Tiffany Tatum a lot, with Gia Lissa not that much because she came later in my career. Mm-hmm. And both of them are great, though. Mm-hmm. Both of them are great. I just like have my favorites because Amira and uh, Alexis Crystal, they are, for me, the most professional girls. And they are so fun. Like, mm-hmm. uh, job is not job with them. It's like, yeah. I love this kind of people, you know. It's yeah. like your day is just like, you go home like this in yeah. the car. <laughs> yeah. So this is these two girls. These two girls are very professional. It's it's uh they are not my friends, mm-hmm. but I can say the best things about them definitely. So yeah, with Tiffany I have a lot of scenes with Gia, not that much. Okay. Uh and then his final question is how is it working with Vixen female director Julia Grandi and what's it like being part of her agency? Uh they are cool. It's so easy going. Um I got used that the shootings can be long, but when you see outcome, you are like, wow. Yeah. So I want to be part of this more and more because you look great on yeah. <laughs> their pictures. So I've been using their pictures for my social media, for agencies, for everything. So every single time I shoot for Vixen, I have so many scenes for Vixen this year here. I wait these scenes to come out because I will be just with oh, pictures, good <laughs> photos. Yes. I know, right? And yeah, like, um, it's, it's easy going for me because I love being on the set. So, Mm -hmm. and uh, Julia is great. So she know what she wants. Mm -hmm. I love this kind of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Do this, do that, done. So yeah, the shootings for big productions can be long. This is only one negative uh, side, but yeah, as I say, you need to love to what you are doing, so you are fine with that and yeah. make a have a fun. Like in Europe, I oh my god, I miss those people so much, <laughs> like uh, Christoph Kela or like Vince when he was there after come shot, and they will just be putting sperm on each other and running around. And oh my god, like we have so much fun, and we have this sarcasm. What I don't use it here. Here I'm uh, people are nicer. Mm-hmm. So I'm very careful because I have dark sarcasm. Mm-hmm. And uh, in Europe is funny. Here I'm like, oh, not yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People need to know me. They will all be all. Be you gotta, you have to read the room. Yeah. 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 And my accent as well. Like when I talk and I'm not smiling, like I, I say something on my hard accent and everyone is like this. I'm, I'm joking. And then I need to smile and yeah. they're ah! Because I look angry, you know, like Joe Staliano, he asked me on a dinner once, like he said, why are you angry? I'm like, 
John, this is the way I'm talking. I'm not angry. This is just Serbian way. And <laughs> talking. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad that you are taking me like you're supposed to because really so many people, they don't take, they don't understand my jokes. They think I'm angry. I'm like, no? It's yeah. Just accent. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I'm uh, I'm used to dark sarcasm for sure. Yeah. My My parents were British, so... Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so a lot of, yeah. Lot of, yeah. That's nice. A lot of sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cherry, thank you so much. This has actually been really enjoyable. And this has been one of my longest episodes in a long time. We went almost yeah. an hour and a half. Woo! Yeah, we're like just shy of an hour and a half. And nice. we like could have kept going. Yeah. I mean, I could have talked about the Bukaki story for like another 20 <laughs> minutes. I'm just like, fa- I just, I don't know why. I just like, I'm fascinated by Bukaki. Oh. It's like a thing. You would like this, the, the video though. I I will have to go yeah. look it up for sure. I've yeah. seen like I've definitely seen um big bukkake scenes and it was in Europe so I'm wondering if it was the same cuz you said it was like the same company. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it was probably that but um I don't remember. Rebecca Volpetti, she did more. Okay. So that's how she come. Eh, eh, eh. Oh, she did like, more guys. Yeah, more and then guys I was came like, on her face. <laughs> Fuck you, Rebecca. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I will go for more. No, I will. It, it was fun about that. Like, who will get more? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not a competition. Yeah, everybody wants to be in, but you know that's why we are special people over here. <laughs> Very special. <laughs> well, thank you again. Um, can you tell everybody where they can find you online, please? Thanks to you again. I'm so happy to be part of this finally. <laughs> finally. So my Twitter is Ivana Cherokees. My Instagram since is sixth one is a cherry official kiss. <laughs> and uh, Cherry Kiss uh, OFC is my TikTok. Fantastic. YouTube channel I will start very soon. And yeah, I took social media, all everything so serious when I arrived here and I'm growing so fast. I'm super happy because in Europe uh, it was not our thing. Mm-hmm. But here uh, people are more clever in the business somehow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are like, mañana, tomorrow. Woo, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think people really uh, see it as a as a career and they, and they yeah. treat it like a business, which, yeah. which it is. Really. Yeah, I love it. I yeah. love it. And you guys can find me online at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Um, I believe when this episode comes out, my mom's Kickstarter will still be going for – Um, Her 1977 memoir that we've republished all about her years at the Playboy Mansion. Um, It was, in fact, the book that got her kicked out of the Playboy Mansion. So it's a very, very juicy read. And we're also um, releasing a limited edition photography book. My mom is Suze Randall, by the way, just in case you didn't know. Some people don't know that. Um, So... Go on Kickstarter, Google Suze Randall. The campaign should show up. Otherwise, I have it linked in all my social media platforms. And, um, yeah, I'm just really proud of her. And it, we're offering some really, really cool stuff. Otherwise, um, join my Patreon, patreon.com slash Unfiltered, where you can watch episodes like this one live. And, you know, while Cherry goes to the bathroom, I can sit here and lecture you about celery, which is what I <laughs> what i did on this version which you will only get if you're a member of of patreon yes. <laughs> which fascinating With content celery, you have more sperm just so you know for both. more sperm for celery if you eat a lot of celery you, you have more sperm more but sperm. does it ta- but does the cum taste like celery uh, probably like shit but mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like for visually yeah. for cum shot is good okay so maybe like a celery pineapple juice <laughs> Is like the porn star like, magic uh, juice. Juices. Maybe you celery. should. Maybe you should come up with like a pineapple celery juice, and it's like special cum shot juice. I could try. I need to find some slave who wanna sleep with me tonight, so I will be feeding it this drink. This somehow I feel like you won't have that problem. No, no. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us, and I will see you. Yes, we are on next week. Next week. 